has a covenant with the Jews and they are saved with the old covenant so they don't need to be converted to Christianity. But let's go back to Romans chapter 11 verse 26 and we'll see that it says, And so all Israel shall be saved and it is as it is written, They shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, which is Jesus Christ, and he shall do what? Turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. In other words, this salvation of, the, of Israel is conditional on the turning away or repentance of ungodliness. And also when the taking away of sins means the confession and forsaking of sin. As a matter of fact, there were thousands of Jews present on the day of Pentecost when Peter had his great sermon, his first sermon on the day of Pentecost, and this is what he said to those Jews. He said what? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So Peter said these words to the Jews whom it is now being discovered by our evangelical and Catholic friends that they don't need to repent anymore. They don't need to be baptized in the name of Jesus for remission of sins anymore. They just can remain in the old covenant and be saved. Is that what the scripture says? No way. The promise is that Israel shall be saved but repentance an acceptance of Jesus as the Messiah and Savior for sin is necessary. And those same Jews heard the word that Peter spoke and it says then they gladly received his word and were baptized the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And these are the first fruits, the very first members of the Christian church, the first converts, they were Jewish by birth. Many say that God must save all Jews regardless of whether they accept Messiah or not because he made that promise to Abraham. And in Genesis chapter 13 verse 15, we find the, the, the promise here stated, For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth so that if a man can number the dust of the earth then shall thy seed also be numbered however I want you to follow me carefully now it's important to understand that even though this God made this promise to Abraham saying to thee to thee Abraham will I give the land all the land which you see and to your seed forever Abraham never received this land the Bible says in Acts chapter 7 verse 5, And God gave Abraham none inheritance in the land, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet God had promised that he would give it to Abraham for a possession and to Abraham's seed after him. So the Lord promised, but Abraham did not receive. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 9 and 13, the Bible says, by faith Abraham sojourned in the land of promise and the word sojourn means to to dwell as a stranger to pass through and so he dwelt in he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country he never accepted that Canaan land as the land of the promise he dwelt in what tabernacles and the word there skin it means tents that is what a nomad lives in, moving from place to place to place. He dwelt there with Isaac and Jacob, who were the heirs with him of the same promise. And we know that Jacob is the one who became Israel. So Israel, Jacob, Israel, Isaac, and Abraham, these all what? Died in faith, not having received the, the promise. So Israel, who was Jacob, did not receive the promise that was made by God. But having what? Seen them afar off and were persuaded of them, that is of the promises, and, and embraced the promises and confessed that they were what? 
strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So, what we're seeing here is that Abraham was promised land, but he died without receiving it. His seed, Isaac and Jacob, were also promised that land. They died and did not receive it. The Bible goes on in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 10 and 16. For Abraham looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker is God. So Abraham was not looking at the land of Canaan. He understood that God did not mean that the land of Canaan with all the, 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 the trouble and the turmoil and the hard work and the hard sun and the hot sun was not what God had in mind for him. It says, but now they, meaning the patriarch, desire a, a better country than that. That was desert. That is a what? A heavenly country, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had what? Prepared for them a city. So Abraham was, Abraham was looking for a city built by God. A heavenly city. Abraham was not looking to the Jerusalem that exists today, but for the new Jerusalem. And the new country that he looked for is the earth made new. As we read here, for the promise that Abraham should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. In other words, it's telling us clearly that the promise was that Abraham would be inherit the world, but not because he kept the law, but because he was righteous through faith. So Abraham understood that God had promised him the earth, not that little piece of land where the Jews and the Arabs are fighting over. And even though also, brethren, even though the promise was made to Abraham and his seed, which we know that they died without receiving that promise as yet, even those who were Abraham's descendants of them, not all were qualified to inherit this, this, this promise. According to Romans 9, 6 and 8, it says, For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. In other words, within the nation of Israel, God says not all of them are Israelites. That is, they which are children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Now remember Abraham had two children. Well, he had a firstborn, Ishmael, and then after that was Isaac. But even though Ishmael was the firstborn, who was the one that the line of Christ would come through? Isaac. So in other words, Isaac was the child of promise. And he therefore was considered as qualified. While Ishmael was not. Even though both of them were children of Abraham. And also remember that Isaac had how many sons? Who were? Jacob and Esau. Esau was the firstborn. But Jacob was chosen for the line of the promise. Even though both were sons of Isaac. And so we have to understand that this is talking about the line, the children of the promise are the line through which Jesus Christ would come into the world, the physical people, but also it's a spiritual principle. It's a saying that not all who are Israelites by blood are the true Israel, but those who are related by promise. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 7 to 9. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the faith of Jesus, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture what? Foreseeing, so this was not something that happened by surprise, but the scripture foresaw it that God would justify the heathen through 
faith, it preached before the gospel unto Abraham, 